why don't we just go through the Bible? We'll talk about it. Matthew 6.24 No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Matthew 19, 23 through 24. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. Matthew 21, 12. And Jesus went to the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Here's Luke, Luke 1, 51 through 53. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their seats and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. Luke 3, 11. And he answered them, whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And whoever has food is to do likewise. Luke 6, 34 through 35. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is due to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evils. Acts, book of Acts, Acts 2, 42 through 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Luke 16, 19, 25. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which had laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes and began in torments to seethe Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And there's Acts 4, 32 through 35. And all the believers were in one heart and one mind, and no one claimed anything of their possessions that was his own. But they shared everything they had. And with great power, the apostles continued to testify the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them, all that there were needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them and brought the money to the apostles' feet and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. James 5, 1 through 6. Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten away your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded 
Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvester have reached the ears of Almighty God. You have lived on the earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter, and you have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. Brings tears to my eyes. What do you think this line here about, you have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence, you have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter. That sounds like the military industrial complex to me. Who fattens themselves in the day of slaughter? The military industrial complex. You've gotten rich by people killing each other. You've gotten profits from war. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. Jesus was warning us about the prison industrial complex. You have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter. And earlier he's warning us about exploitation. He says, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying against you. And the cry of the harvester has reached the ears of God. God has heard the cry of the workers who are being ripped off and exploited. He's heard their cry. This is powerful stuff. 1 Timothy 5.8 But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, then he has denied faith and is worse than an unbeliever. 1 Timothy 5.18 For the scripture says, you shall not mu muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer deserves his wages. Right? No slavery. The, word, the laborer should be paid. Timothy, 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves of many pangs. Ephesians 4.28, Let him that stole steal no more. But let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, and that he may give to those who need, right? Working for the good of others, for need, not for profit. Revelations 6, 5, 6. And when the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. And then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, six pounds of barley for a day's wages, but do not damage the oil and wine. Sounds like Satan. Satan is a capitalist ripping off his workers, right? He's the black horse, two pounds of wheat for a day's wages. Satan is a capitalist calculating how little he can pay his workers. Revelation 6.15, and then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves among the rocks and mountains. And they called to the rocks and the mountains, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can withstand it? All the rich and powerful people, the kings and the princes are begging, can the rocks and the mountains fall on us? Can we die now? Because the vengeance of the Lord is coming and it'll be far worse. Revelations 18, through 1 through 24. And after this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority and from the earth was made bright his glory. And he called with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has come from the dwelling place of demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of passion from her sexual immorality. And the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of luxurious living. And then I heard a voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. From her sins are heaped high as heavens, and God has remembered her iniquities. Right? It's talking about the whore of Babylon, that the kings of the earth committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her luxurious living. 
Sounds like a global empire is going to be created. Some kind of global empire is going to be created. The kings of the earth will be having sex with it. And the merchants of the earth will be growing wealthy from it. And then God will say, come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues, for her sins are heaped as high as heaven. Come out of it. Come out of it. And this is the last one I'll read, but it's a long one. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain and sat down. And his disciples came to him and he began to teach. And he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be fulfilled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you falsely for saying all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it may be made salty again? And it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, and neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see in your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. That's Matthew 5, 1 through 17. If you don't think, if you think Jesus was an advocate of the free market, if you think he was an advocate of greed and selfishness, you must have never read the Bible. And that was just some of it. I could keep going. I could keep going. Yes, yes. Who was it who asked that question? He was on the rock fin. I hope he's still watching, right? That was that was Chris Leon who asked and that was the answer.